I have failed interview after interview because I could not do basic leak code DSA style problems. I failed interviews at TripAdvisor. I failed one at Meta. I failed interviews at Lyft. I struggled to do basic for loops. I thought about giving up. And now I'm at a point where I've solved 1000 leak code problems. I'm able to ace coding interviews. I actually love doing leak code problems now. It's very, very similar to playing chess or doing any kind of puzzle. In this video, I'm gonna be going over what is leak code, how do you actually prepare for it as a beginner, as an intermediate, and as an advanced person? What happens after you solve 1000 problems? And I'm going to go over what is the most important factor that I think to succeed and like what's the biggest mistake that I see people making and answering and I'll answer just other questions I think that come up. First, what is leak code? Leak code is the standardized way in the United States for big tech companies to filter and select their candidates. It is a fast and easy way to see if somebody has studied and it's comprised of mostly data structure and algorithms problems that so for example, things like traversing through a list, parsing through strings, um, you know, computing or, or processing data, you know, that's in a graph, like traversing through some kind of graph uh, and generating like some solution through that. And overall being good at leak code means getting a job offer at Google, at Facebook, at Apple. Um, and it, it's a requirement if you would want to work at these companies. How many leak code problems do you need to prepare? I would say that in my opinion, you only really need about 200 problems and what I did was I solved the grind 75 list and that got me to a point where I was like pretty, you know, comfortable. Like I, I was, I was, I was bad. I was not, you know, as good, but I was in a spot where I knew understood the fundamentals. I had the fundamentals of graphs. I had a little bit of arrays. I had a little bit of string parsing mixed in there and I had a pretty wholesome overall view of like being able to solve these problems. And so that's the point that you want to do where you want to solve one of these lists. So I would recommend what I did, which is solve the grind 75, get that fundamental and then expand out to even the grind 160 for it's just the same list from the same guy and, and then do contests. And this goes into how do you actually prepare for DSA? So what you want to do is get used to interviews being a 30 minute time constraint where you have to solve the problem. It's generally 30 minutes to about an hour, depending on the company that you're interviewing for. And that's the constraint that you need to give yourself for each problem. I would give myself 30 minutes because I think that's pretty, that's maybe in the middle ground of like the one hour uh, threshold or maybe 45 minutes. When you're solving the problems, you should give yourself, put that on a timer. Um, if you can't solve the problem, that's okay. Look at the solution, learn something, and then come back to the problem later and repeat that process. You try practice, get the practice in, look at the solution, come back, get the practice in, learn. And at that point, you're, you're in a rotation where you're actually going to be learning very, very rapidly and much faster than all of your peers. Number one, finish a list. Number two, as you're doing the list, right, give yourself a time limit um, to do the problems, look at the solutions, learn from that. Once you finish the list, do leak code contests. And then what this is going to do is it's going to happen, open up a new dimension where you're actually going to be comparing yourself, your speed to another person's speed. And you can see whether you're improving, whether you're being good, whether you're actually able to solve the problem as well. And how good are you getting? When I started, I was at most likely around, you know, just top like or top worst case, like just bottom at that complete bottom. Then I finished the list. I was around, you know, top 40%. I continued practicing and now I'm able to score top 5%. So out of, you know, if 30,000 people take a contest, I'm able to solve it in, you know, place of like 3,000, uh, 2,000 or, you know, 5,000, which is where you want to be. What happens after you solve? So I've, okay. I've just gone over and talked about how, okay, you don't really need 300 problems. And like, why would you even bother doing 1000? And one, I did this because it was fun. I still enjoy it. I still like, you know, coding, uh, and I still like the J structure and algorithms. And there's still a lot of stuff that I have that I need to learn and actually improve on. But let's talk about like the benefits, like what do you actually gain from doing any of this stuff? Why, why would you ever want to do 1000 problems? Why would you not just do like the 300 and then just do the interviews? And I'm going to, to, and to talk about those benefits, I would say there's really three things that are, that I've noticed. Uh, one, I can debug faster now after doing a thousand problems. So it is because I've written and seen a lot of different like types of code, I can actually expect, like I know what are common issues. So for example, when you start learning programming, you learn what a for loop is. And there are a lot of errors that can come up with for loops, for example, out of bounds issues. But when you start writing code, you kind of already know that an out of bounds issue can occur and that that's a type of error that can occur and that you can just avoid that. Or you can just look out, look and watch out for the out of bounds errors. And so that's what 
doing a thousand problems kind of brings you is you get to see all these different scenarios from writing so many snippets of code where you can see in the overall context what types of issues generally come up when this thing happens and then how can you fix those and related to these error messages you get really really used to the error messages in your chosen programming language so when i'm coding in python or in javascript i see so many python javascript errors and i understand oh, okay when i get this error that means that this is probably happening and overall this just improves your velocity you get to code faster you get to ship things faster you get to understand the libraries and the features of a given language even more so this can help you with simplifying your code it can help you with um, coding more efficiently and being able to use just some really cool like tools that can make your algorithms faster or uh, make your code cleaner and the one of the biggest benefits has been when i'm studying system design and it's that like i can understand a lot of system design algorithms so for example if i'm talking about like a batch processing system and i'm using MapReduce or that I need to learn about MapReduce, I understand how that algorithm works and I understand like how it's like implemented a lot faster. And understanding is gonna be really, really necessary when you actually have to code it. So there's algorithms like um, consensus algorithms where you've got multiple different types of databases and they all need the same uh, you know, data, uh, like for CRDTs, but uh, I can understand that a lot more uh, just because I've seen like a lot of algorithms that I, I, can, I can compartmentalize all of the patterns that I've seen into something. Um, so count, min, sketch, is another algorithm I can understand. Uh, quad trees, I can understand like how that could be implemented in real life. And again, it's just gonna be a lot faster than some engineer who's never looked at the before. So far, I've given you all the tools that you need to actually become one of the best leak coders um, in the world. And it all just comes down to, you know, finishing the list, doing contests, and then continuously solving problems and learning a little bit from those. What is the hardest uh, thing that people are encountering that I've noticed? What is stopping people from actually getting jobs at Google, Facebook, whatever, and passing with the DSA things? And I wanna give you an example. I wanna ask you a question, which is, um, imagine a scenario where you have one person who, when they're solving like the leak code problems, they, they're, they tell themselves, oh, I'm really, really stupid. I'm never gonna solve this problem. I should just give up now. Take that person and then compare them to another person who is who thinks when they solve problems, oh, wow, this is like really fun. This is really interesting. Uh, I wonder how this problem can be solved. Now which person is more likely to give up? And the answer is like pretty obvious, right? It's the person who's saying, oh, I should just give up. And this happens to a lot, a lot of software engineers where they can tackle everything else in computer science, but then once they go to leak code, okay, they can tackle everything in computer science. And then once they go to leak code, they enter into this phase where they think that they're really stupid. They think that they'll never be able to make it. Um, and I'm gonna tell you now, IQ does not matter for lead code. The biggest factor is just practicing. You're already pretty smart because you've gotten your, you. from what I've noticed, right? I've seen a lot of smart engineers and a lot of them have graduated with uh, computer science diplomas. Like they've understood hard concepts. And the only thing that's separating them, the only thing that's, the only thing that's like stopping them is just solving these problems. And just practicing it's just a, a form of practice like you can't ride a bicycle the first time or you can't um you know learn how to design how learn how operating system works without like just studying it right but the hardest part about leetcode is that it's also practice my solution to fixing like this problem this is overall a mental state problem you need to have a good mental state so in my opinion you should be meditating um, if you don't want to meditate you just at least at least at least need to realize that like your mind is going to tell you things your mind is going to tell you things and it's not necessarily going to be true your mind's going to tell you you're really really stupid and that doesn't mean that you are actually dumb and you're going to see this a lot when people post on reddit on r slash leak code or people post on whatever they what happens is they they end up oscillating they get really really excited for leak code they get ready to do it and then something happens they fail their interview and then they post on reddit and say i'm done i'm a failure i can never do this again i can't believe i failed this and then they give up and that's the person they're out of the race essentially and they just can't improve because you need to practice you need to keep going 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 you can't oscillate like this and so you need to understand at least at least understand if you aren't going to bother meditating is that you need to understand that your mind doesn't want you to grow your mind doesn't want you to get your new job what your mind wants you to do is just stay normal keep doing what you've been doing and not actually you know practice improve and then try to like you know get to like some um, new uh, a new you know change essentially it's going to it's going to fight back against you and that that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to like believe everything it's saying if it says that you're stupid and things like that and overall um how do you know when you're ready for fang i would say that you're ready for Fang if you can score on those like leak code contests, at least in 2024 as of October, if you can score within like top 20% on like a leak code contest, um, you could definitely pass like your Fang interviews. Um, if you can score uh, top 
maybe top 40%, depending on like the competitive programming platform um, on those contests, which are you know mostly just DSA, you can also do very, very well um, on your actual interviews. So overall, that is it. Um, now, now, if you're still struggling with interviews, if you're still confused about this, if you need like more specific clarification, or if there's any questions that I can ask, you can join the school community group link in the description and message me and I'll answer your questions. Um, it's completely free, no charge. And thank you for watching this video, for making it through. Um, good luck on your interviews and I will see you